Hello everyone, Destro here with another top video. Today, we'll be reviewing my personal picks for the top 66 scariest, chilling, or otherwise creepy levels from games. If the game in question doesn't have levels, then it will be that section of the game. It could also be a creepy moment, or an enemy encounter, or even some creepy easter eggs. Nothing we've already reviewed before, of course. As much as I'd love to fill up the list with 10 places in Stalker and Fallout 3, for this list, there'll be one entry per game. Since I couldn't decide between the scariest of these games, this is of course a non-ranked list. Keep in mind that this list will obviously contain spoilers and endings to some games, so if you see a game you haven't played and are planning on doing so, then you should skip the number. Obviously, like I said, the list will also include some scary pop-ups. Without any more delay, enjoy the list, and have a happy Halloween. Fallout 3 is definitely a great candidate for creepy places. I mean, Deathclaw Sanctuary, Andale, I'm not going to spoil that for you. Anyway, the Dunwick Building, one of the many places, is an abandoned office building. Many of its floors are destroyed, and there are really buff ghouls inside. If you explore, you can find audio logs from a man named Jamie who's blindly looking for his dad. If you collect most of them, you can listen to his transformation to a ghoul from too much radiation exposure. You can also end his pain by finding and killing him at the bottom of the building. The story is truly depressing, with the perfect rundown corporate building scenario, accompanied only by lurking ghouls and chilling ambience. This is easily the darkest any pain game has ever gone. Max is drugged, and he has a very violent nightmare after the murder of his wife and child. After navigating a maze and following a blood trail, you can hear the screams of your infant child as he's being murdered while you can't do anything about it, but try to find your way out. And, oh no, uh, please, God, no. did, did I mention that Max Payne isn't even a horror game? In the Halo Trilogy's campaigns, the Flood were a prominent and almost necessary part of it. Each appearance of theirs more terrifying than the last as they consume and become whatever's in their way. However, the Flood, in my opinion, are at their scariest in 343 Guilty Spark, a level in Halo Combat Evolved, where you see how most non-armored humans fare to the Flood's attacks from your fallen comrade's helmet camera. And then you, yourself, are hunted by them afterwards, leaving you no choice but to flee to the exit. Friend of yours? No, we just met. Okay, okay, I know the level's not called Haunted House, but this part is purely what scared me. The Haunted House from Mario 64 is all-encompassing fucking evil. The music in the level is unsettling, everything looked evil, and it was just oddly out of place for a little kid's game. And not to mention the killer piano, we, we all still have nightmares about him. In Resident Evil 4, to me, any level with the Regenerator is one of the most suspenseful. His heavy breathing and slow footsteps foreshadow evil in its purest form. He doesn't want something to eat, and he doesn't want Sadler's praise. He just wants to kill you. That's it. Killer Croc was already hinted at as being a badass, so when we find out that we're right in the middle of his lair, and he's underwater, the suspense is already there. But then when he kills another villain, Scarecrow, you know shit's getting real, and the tension grows as you try to avoid him as best you can.
feasting on your bones. Robbing the Cradle, a level from Thief 3, is legendary for its beginning, which terrifies players, however, spoiler alert, has no enemies in it. Not until you get to the inner circle, however. So there's a perfect mixture of high suspense and fear. This level actually inspired the Fort Frolic area from Bioshock, which also serves as a very creepy part of the lore, and it's a great level as well. Also, that little girl's voice was just too much for me when I got to play the game. Once I saw a man in one of the basins, all wrapped up in wet bandages. He heard me come in and started making screaming noises. I think he wanted me to help him, but I was too afraid. Half-Life 2 takes a sudden, very dark turn when you're forced to go to Ravenholm to escape the Combine. Alex has mentioned that they don't go there anymore, and it's obvious when you get there why. The town's in shambles, filled with humans and zombies alike that have died due to a crazed man tra traps named Father Grigori. To make matters worse, you have almost no ammo. Definitely, undisputably, the most creepy level in the game. This hotel and the quest Haunting at Midnight from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines was closed after two children were murdered by their parents inside. You can find diaries that explain the father grew suspicious of his wife having an affair and slowly succumbed to the insanity in a The Shining-esque manner. Their ghosts still haunt the hotel and you get to explore it. Awesome. So, earlier in the game, Condemned Criminal Origins, there were these mannequins that were actually people, that once you turned their back on them, they would attack you. However, on this part, you see some mannequins, and you can tell they're just mannequins. However, when you move forward and turn your back, they move. And then they move again. And again. Lab X-18 in Stalker is undisputed by many as being, while short, the scariest part in the game. According to lore, it was used to study psychic radiation on living cells, and mutated people in the lab are seen quite often, similar to some of the vaults in Fallout 3. But the lab closed after taking too much radiation because a creature was let loose and destroyed it, letting all the other experiments free. In Eternal Darkness, you have a sanity bar, which is kind of the game's claim to fame. The higher your sanity bar goes down, or up I guess, the more crazy you go and the more stuff doesn't just seem quite right. Some things are as simple as, you know, statues turning their head to look at you, which is creepy in its own way, but it can get even more intense, like the game pretending to delete your save. And even things such as simple as just examining a bathtub can turn into an event if you've really lost it. As if this game wasn't creepy and sad enough with its fish people, odd music, and underlying depressing plot, Majora's Mask has a bad ending a sort of long game over screen. If you allow time to run out, you'll actually get to see the moon crash into the first civilian area you go to, and then followed by Link being devoured by flames. Then afterwards it gets even more creepy, leaving us with the message saying you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? A happy mask salesman says this at the beginning of the game. Chances are you'll get to see this at least once in your playthrough. And that line of text at the end is chilling every time. <laughs> 
The level inspired by Thief, Fort Frolic should have just been a shortcut to Hephaestus. However, a deranged artist named Sander Cohen locks the door. He wants to test Jack through a series of trials and complete his masterpiece at the same time to unlock the bathysphere for him. It's on this level, however, when you realize how crazy the guy really is. The map's littered with his demented drawing showing his shattered perception of beauty and his human art that looks similar to mannequins, but upon further inspection, they're actually dead people. It's... It's beautiful. In Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, once you get to the end, you find out your neighbors aren't too happy you're here. They try to break open the door, and you run, opening and blocking door after door. As you run, they scream and laugh, talking about catching you and what they're going to do to you if they do. It's definitely a great deterrent for you to not get caught, and the first time around, it's a really nerve-wracking moment in the game. I mean, being backwards inbred hillbillies, I don't think they're going to kill you first. Yeah. The Forever Forest is a level in Paper Mario for the N64, where you're looking for Boo's Mansion. The level is a maze, and to leave, you need to look at the game closely to tell which path you should take. Some differences can be obvious, like different NPCs in different areas, but some really creepy, like flowers with faces. Ugh. Throw in the whole wolves howling in the background thing, and you definitely have a creepy level. The library level from American McGee's Alice is the best level in the game to me, definitely because it's easy to get lost in. This is where the music in the game really starts to make you nervous and, you know, isn't helping your situation out at all. The library level from American McGee's Alice is the best level in the game to me, definitely because it's easy to get lost in. This is where the music in the game really starts to make you nervous and, you know, isn't helping your situation out at all. It looks like your childhood memories of the circus got all mixed up with his childhood memories of his dad's butcher shop. My memories were bad enough. This is just gross. Uh-oh. Even the title of this Psychonauts level is kind of off. The protagonist, Raz's consciousness, is brought with all the Anders, mixing their greatest fears together. Rising water is a prominent part of the level, but when you drown, you're pulled under the water and forced to die if it gets too high. The rat is one of many trials in heavy rain to see how far you'll go to save your son. This is the last trial in which Ethan Mars must drink a vial of poison to find the location of his son. This is depressing, but what I found particularly surreal and creepy about it is that before you drink the vial, you can actually read Ethan's thoughts like you can everyone else's in the game. But everything he was thinking, I was thinking as well. I just thought it was genius on the developer's part. Save Sean, and die. Christ. He loses his father, but at least he's alive. Maybe it's the right thing to do. Poison. So, if I drink this, I'll be dead in an hour, and if I don't, I won't get the last letters. The cameras. He must be watching me. He could be lying. Maybe I'll die as soon as I drink this, and then no one can save Sean. One hour to live. Just enough time to save Sean. I did what I had to, Sean. Your dad's coming to save you. 
Fable 2 is not a scary or creepy game in the slightest. Let's get that out of the way, because that's why this is so creepy. So, in the middle of nowhere, you can find an abandoned house. Seemingly just a normal house to loot, as normal, but once you enter, the lights turn off. Inside the house, you can find long dead people whose skeletons reflect their last activity as they died. Hell, there's even one at the dining table. There's also a chest inside, so... That's cool. In the first person shooter Quake, this level in Quake shows what it's like to be turned into a Strog, the enemy of the game, complete with saws cutting into you and needles being injected into you. This is like if in Gears of War they showed the process of a locust turning into a Lambin or a cog being turned into a drone. There's no cool scene where he breaks out of the chair, he's captured, and you're forced to watch a protagonist become amputated and assimilated with no alternative outcomes. That's scary if I've ever seen it. the neural site in his head hasn't been activated. While the abandoned house from No More Heroes 2 is kind of eerie in its own right, the main scare factor, of course, is the boss, Matt Helms. A man who's very wide, he's a large guy, and he's covered in blood, with a hockey mask and a baby face for some reason. Uh, you don't really understand this until after you kill him, and after you do, it's revealed that he's nothing more than a little kid who had made a deal with the devil, killing his parents for immortality. He then proceeds to try to kill you and get shot in the chest. I'm gonna kill you. What's that? <laughs> this is the problem with fighting the supernatural. You cannot kill someone who's already dead. The Catacombs and the Tomb of the Giants from Dark Souls are linked together, so I'm counting them both for this number. For starters, these two places are the darkest in the game. The Tomb of the Giants at one point requires a lamp, it gets so dark. There's lots of opportunities for you to fall off the map easily, and the Catacombs holds one of the creepiest and saddest bosses in the game, the Pinwheel. A man, wife, and child fused together after the man was experimenting and tried to bring his dead relatives back to life. At the end of the Tomb of the Giants, Gravelord Nito, one of the four bosses, you still have to fight him in the dark, and he is not an easy boss to kill. Alma in Fear is one of, if not the main reason why some classify the original Fear as psychological horror instead of the shooter, just like the others. She's here to remind you that this isn't just your run-of-the-mill FPS. And, by God, does she do that quite often. In Chapter 1 of Dead Space, after boarding the seemingly abandoned USG Ishimura, you get to see what just a few necromorphs can do to your squad, completely dismembering and decimating them, except for two of the members. And then, after that, you get to have a close encounter with one yourself. Of course, you're still weaponless. It sets the tone for a pretty suspenseful and scary game. Run, Isaac! Get the hell out of there! It's 
Extracting the DNA from Isaac's eyeball is truly a terrifying experience. It's, it's a new horror experience. It's a please, God, don't let me stab this man in the eye experience. And you'll usually miss the first time, and you will know when you miss. Here is gathered Hyrule's bloody history of greed and hatred. The Shadow Temple from Ocarina of Time is a classic creepy level. You've almost definitely heard of this place before. The Shadow Temple is a dark place with creepy music, the dead hand, don't get me started on that, and then, of course, Bongo Bongo. The entire temple holds skulls and bones, and it's hinted at this place holds the remains of those who died from some type of crisis in Hyrule. It was scary then, and to newcomers, and to most, it's still scary now. And at last, you get chased. A lot. But some of the more prominent one-sided battles usually take place between Miles and a quite large man named Chris. See, Chris wants to rip your neck out. One of the scariest of your getaways take place at night in a cell block. And without your camera's night vision, the only way you can tell where he is is by his breath behind you. With all the scary pop-up indie games these days, when you first play Gone Home, you think it's the same. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere, in a house, alone. The only sound that ever makes is thunder and rain outside, of course, the audio logs too. You're always thinking that the next door you open might hold something that you know well isn't even in the game. You've probably never heard of this game, but don't feel bad for not knowing about it. It was poorly advertised and an exclusive on the PS3. However, it does have some terrifying levels, the unanimously scariest being the Saiga Hospital. Think the Silent Hill Hospital, but with no weapons and playing as a little girl. Yeah. While Limbo might not be a horror game, it's definitely a game where you're the prey. Always. So, when you get stuck in webs and see the slowly creeping spider legs, you panic. You mash every button and nothing seems to happen. Then, the spider grabs the kid, and you expect him to finish you right there, still mashing buttons in vain. Thankfully, he's saving you for later. Death is a topic Call of Duty embraces quite often, but ultimate and utter defeat is not. After leaving a fight in Call of Duty 4 believed to be won, in the distance you see a nuclear cloud, and it downs your chopper. But you're a Call of Duty character, you survived, right? Yeah, you did. Just long enough to see the war zone you were fighting in, now destroyed by a nuclear bomb, and then dying of radiation poisoning. We all know the story of Lavender Town, there's nothing I can tell you that ha you haven't already heard. Its music is rumored to make people self-harm. There's a corner in the map where Pokemon are buried, and according to lore, Team Rocket actually killed a Pokemon and her ghost haunts the town. Many ghosts haunt them, one of which being Cubone, whose face you cannot see, but according to the Pokédex, it wears the skull of its dead mother. Jesus. The scariest moments with enemies are usually first encounters, and it's even scarier when you have no knowledge of this enemy's existence. In this case, in The Last of Us, you just randomly come across the fast clicker. With his two hit kills, he'll probably kill you the first time you meet him, and scare the shit out of you too. <laughs> Dead babies are always creepy. Dante's Inferno, Dead Space, there's no exception. But this boss from Luigi's Mansion takes the cake. Chauncey truly is the creepiest boss in the game, to me anyway. First of all, you have to realize that he's a dead baby. I mean, this is a Nintendo game with a dead baby in it. He was around six months to a year old when he died, which is pretty depressing. You start to stop feeling sorry for him when he starts throwing shit at you, and then teleports you to a giant crib in the sky. Baby hell, I guess. And then you start to realize that he's a demon child, and it's no surprise everyone else in the house died with him there. He might be the easiest boss in the game, but when I was little, Chauncey's room alone is what stopped me from playing for a few days. Lesson learned.
If a poltergeist baby asks you to play, leave the room. The gyroid from Animal Crossing is a little helper next to your house that can assist with saving, storing items, and hints on what to do. He's kind of like a butler made of the fire hydrant, who always looks excited for some reason. His face is pretty funny looking, but he's a fire hydrant, so you know, whatever. But for whatever reason, if you enter a new village, don't save, and then reset your game, you get to see this unholiness. Your villager gets the face of the gyroid. God. Why? Christ, I hate this thing. Seriously. It's what Slender wishes he was. She walks at like 3 miles per hour and manages to easily be the scariest thing in any Metroid game. She doesn't just linger and walk around. You actually need some cunning and quick thinking, or a game FAQ walkthrough, to avoid most of her surprise visits. And her opening cutscene. Ugh, nightmares for weeks. So you've just gotten used to killing zombies, and you're walking down the hallway, and you swear you heard some tapping on that last window, and you hear it in here too. You look up, and boom, the liquor. You're immediately about to fight it too. It may look harmless now, but back then, man this kept some people up, or from even playing the game. The only things I need to say about this one is that this chick has the creepiest laughter of all time and the Fatal Frame series is truly a great one. The rest you can watch. Um Jammer Lammy is truly a terrifying game. It is insanity. This level may have been a bit too far. As a little kid, this game's randomness and odd characters weirded me out to the point of not even wanting to play it anymore. However, in stage 6 of the European or Japanese version, instead of going to an island, Lammy slips on a banana peel, dies, and actually goes to hell. Rated E for everyone, right? And, even though it may be a fake ending, it's still heavily surprising, and actually is the reason it's not in the US release. If, if I'm dead, then the game's over. Silent Hill is a place where your deepest fears manifest into reality, so naturally your character's fears are blatantly obvious depending on what you're seeing, the enemies, and the surroundings. No matter what, this scene is creepy, even if you don't know the plot to the game at all. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear! Worry about that now! It's time to celebrate your birthday. You've got me mistaken for someone else. Today's not my... I'm not mistaken. Today is your 24th birthday. And I have a present for you. Which do you prefer? To give pain or to receive it? You can have the one you hate the most. <laughs> it's not my birthday. Heather, that's the last thing you should be worried about right now. 
The last Silent Hill moment on this list, yes, I promise, Silent Hill Downpour offers the most tense of scenes when Murphy's racing against time to recite a poem to scare the boogeyman away as he's about to kill a small child, one of Murphy's fears, since he had a child who died as well from drowning. When you get back and begin to recite the poem, you see that the boogeyman's already made it, and you start to wonder, he can't possibly kill the child, can he? And as he walks closer and closer to him, it becomes more apparent. Murphy can't save the child, just like he couldn't save his own son. Long, damn it! No! Uh, uh, one with your skin splayed out from within. Uh, once the monster has his fun. Oh God! Darling! Take heed. It's not too late. His um, mistakes need to haunt you forever. He's just a kid, you son of a bitch. Uh. Though you have regret, you can't just forget. You alone decide your fate. My favorite episode of The Walking Dead. In Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 2, someone helps you. Well, <laughs> we all know that no one can help you without negative repercussions in this game, am I right? So, anyway, things start to get fishy when you find the quote-unquote hunting room. As Lee goes to quote-unquote wash his hands for dinner, he finds one of his buddies limbless in a hidden room. What does he tell you? Ugh. Don't eat that! Huh? Uh, huh? Damn manners! It didn't have to be this way. You're eating human meat! That's crazy! What the hell? Ridiculous. Uh, I'm scaring the kids, Lee. Lee, what the hell is wrong with you? Don't indulge him, Lily. There's always something with this guy. What is going on? Everything could have turned out okay for you folks. He would have died anyway. We gotta think about living. You might not believe this now, but the Gears of War series was actually aimed at being a little bit of a horror game in the first installment. In two acts, the Underground Act and the Nightfall Act, which is the one that we're reviewing now, they have lots of survival horror elements. The Krill, my least favorite enemy in the game, and definitely the most powerful in the game, are a swarm of huge bats. Well, not bats, but you know what I mean. They swarm an enemy if he's in darkness, dozens of them screeching before ripping that enemy into very, very many pieces. They don't discriminate either. They'll even kill locusts if the locusts are in the dark. Frank, Santiago. Hey! It's dark now, so you better watch it, man. The krill are probably out by now. Yeah, they are. And they just killed the guys at checkpoint one. Shit. All right, yo, Santiago, man. That means they're coming this way. Johnson, check the lights. Yo, man, you better keep moving. Checkpoint two is up ahead. the tubes and listen. Just don't stay for too long. Some say it's the voice of the tunnels. The Haunted Tunnels in Metro 2033 is a place where much spectral activity thrives. Phantoms roam around, reliving their past experiences, one of which being their death. They're forced to relive over and over. Even the phantom of the old train still roams the tunnels. Another anomaly in the tunnels are the singing pipes, which can be heard if you stand next to them. It's assumed that the cries that come with inside are messages from the Dark Ones, or simply phantoms. A lot's more explained in the books, but I think the game delivers it pretty well, and it's one of the scariest levels in the game.
let's go. Please, and look forward. A battle raged here long ago. The Dead Sea, from Chrono Cross, was formed after the dimension split, so it holds parts of the future, such as broken highways, city ruins, and phantoms doomed to walk the same paths, till the end of time, of course. The sea is a place that was never supposed to exist. It was an alternate timeline, where the apocalypse wasn't prevented. However, Surge revived it, leaving it as the creepiest and most mystifying place in the game to many players. While it doesn't really look creepy, in lore, it is. I mean, the future. Where the apocalypse wasn't prevented. Dead people, forced to walk around and live their deaths, over and over, just like in Metro. Plus, that Vena Eunice boss is fucking creepy. Long ago, the original Game Boy handheld console had an adapter where you could take photos. Uh, it, it sucked, but uh, it came preloaded with a few types of games. You know, there's one I just showed you where you could put your face on a little stick figure and run. But then there's an RPG type of game with an option called Run that didn't seem to do anything. Most of the time when you press it, it just says Crossing the Equator. But sometimes, if you're, uh, lucky enough, I guess, you'll find one of three error message faces with text like, what are you running from? Straight out of a horror game. These terrifying photos were crafted with our beloved Game Boy camera and the architect of our nightmares for the next few months was the thing we purchased willingly. Yeah, okay, dead kids and games are creepy, we've, we've been over that, but while Modern Warfare 3 did have a kid dying from a gas attack, which was tragic, Cod Finest Hour has a ghost kid sitting in a baby crib, surrounded by candlelight and pictures of babies. Yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that either. Shodan, the killer AI from the System Shock series, is always scary, even more so than GLaDOS. Yeah, I went there. Her reveal in the sequel to System Shock, however, is absolutely terrifying. Let me it's give you the brief you description. Afraid? A woman named what Janice Polito reactivates fear? her 42 years after she was destroyed in the first game. After reactivating, her very first mean of action was taking over the very vessel that saved her, manipulated everyone on board into doing what she wants, including convincing the protagonist that she herself was Janice Polito. Once you find Miss Polito's body, Shodan decides it's time to introduce herself. Powerful, with no sense of in in individual will, or moral constraints. Fitting handmaidens to my divinity. Before that, hack hackers destroyed my primary data loop when it eradicated Cit Citadel. In the late 90s, games experimented with full motion video, and we got games with great cutscenes like Sonic CD, and full games that used this technology like Phantasmagoria, a much less successful point and click game, a cult classic and a gruesome one at that. What follows is the creepiest and my favorite scene in the entire cheesy game. To me, this could still hold up with better quality and acting, and it's still creepy. Urone, 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 urone. 
Prey is a game that didn't scare me too often, but it was still a great intense game. This one scene with the school bus is pretty alarming though. The choir from Amnesia is the scariest place to me because of how easy it is to get lost in there. You can use your light if you don't mind being hunted, of course, and killed, probably. The eerie music doesn't make anything better. It's nothing I can explain very well without you playing it. Please, find the ingredients of the Pazatonic via the sky. And do so before you assemble the ball. The barrier keeping you from the inner sanctum will only be breached for a short time. Unless everything is taken care of before mending the ball, you won't be able to save it. Getting chased by someone can be terrifying if done right. It's especially creepy when you get a foreshadowing of it. The graphics are too bad to ignore, but getting chased in Clock Tower was especially scary because of the change in music and the fax machine message you get before chasing that reads, coming to get ya. It also notes that the message was sent by someone in the building. <laughs> While I didn't think a game solely based off of jump scares would get me, it did get me a few times. While I can't really choose a scripted moment since every experience in SCP is different, I can show you this one. Left 4 Dead is a team-based game. You can kill common infected easily alone, but it usually always takes two to kill special infected. Being alone in this game makes you vulnerable to hunters, smokers, witches, and other skulking special infected that are surely nearby. One attack from them, and you're trapped. And your only option is to watch. Hold on, I gotta get you Just like Lavender Town, there's not much I can say about Gygus that hasn't already been said, and you've probably already heard. This boss is the single-handed, most disturbing thing in this otherwise very happy game, and it's truly an intimidating boss as well. Of course, it won't be creepy just watching gameplay. Most of these on this list, you will need to play to actually feel the intensity. Anyway, the boss is based after the creator of the game accidentally saw a rape scene in a movie after going to the wrong cinema. Yeah, that should uh, definitely explain the creepiness of this boss well enough, hopefully. For some odd reason, Nintendo exclusive games have a fetish with having one severely creepy part. In this level of Super Paper Mario, Merle's mansion, the mansion, go figure, the little maid, Mimi, reveals to you that she's actually a fateful servant of Count Black. Then, she snaps her own neck, exorcist style, and turns into a fucking spider. What was the rating on this game again? The Suffering is definitely a more action-oriented game, but the level, Worst Place on Earth, is on this list, because of its eerie, ambient, and solitary moments such as these, and then the more foreshadowing enemy appearances in the level. It's really a great first level to the game. You've got to get me out of here! Cryostasis has some pretty creepy levels, but my favorite has to be Glacier. It has frost ghosts and some very creepy mental echoes. While the idea of the Blair Witch movie has not always really translated well for me onto the screen, the game fit much better to me, especially the house level. 
the whole area really gets that Silent Hill look down and the uncomfortable and unnerving vibe that good horror games give. This game just oozes odd. It's it's so creepy. Every character in the game looks weird, and I'm I'm sure it's partly because of the time it was made, but it really adds to the already gloom, drab atmosphere. The town is the is the place where you can find plenty of people like this. This game is chock full of shit your pants moments. While the entire game is scary. You can really tell they went for broke with the first level. And while a lot of the scares are kind of cheap, you can't deny they usually make you at least flinch the first time around. UA Nikki is a horror adventure JRPG about dreams. So, up to this point, you've already seen some weird, nightmare inducing shit, but for me, this optional room takes the cake. That multicolored dildo looking thing is QQ Kun, and that's not what's creepy. This is what's creepy. The entire premise of this game is just sadistic. It, no, it's not about a man with no mouth. It, the game is about this AI who traps these five humans and has been torturing them for about a hundred years now. And he's finally going to give them a chance to let them kill themselves. The good ending would require that you cause pain to others. Uh, one of the objectives being to cripple a kid purposely. And the bad ending is being turned into a small appendaged gray blob. Now I have no skull. No breath. No throat. I have no mouth. And I must scream. Rule of Rose is about a world where little girls have created a hierarchy, and of course, they're at the top. So when the main character, Jennifer, does something they don't like, she is belittled or just generally tortured mentally or physically in many ways. My most fearful being one where she's tied into a bag with a funnel, and all the little kids take turns putting grasshoppers, ants, spiders, and other friendly critters into it. And that about does it for the top 66 scariest levels in games. I'm sure I missed a few, and if you have a few favorites that I missed, be sure to comment and let me know what I did miss. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and if you'd like more, leave a suggestion for me, and maybe even a subscription. Be sure to check out the channels in the description as well that I borrowed clips from. Most of them have full playthroughs on these games. I seriously recommend watching a playthrough of the Blair Witch game. It's seriously great. But anyway, thanks everyone, and have a safe and happy Halloween.